Yes, oh. you do. If you yes, the aisle has a very big writing section, <laughs> and it's something. So you know, a lot of people are not as proficient with writing in English. So we're going to start from the very beginning here. Oh, Ritsuka, I hate to say I'm going to meet you though. You're a bit loud. <laughs> All right, so like I said, this week we are going to be talking about the reading and writing section of the IELTS exam. Now, we talked about the reading section last week, and so we're going to go over one more reading section, and then we're going to talk about the writing section. Now, I, you know, I do record all of these classes, so you can watch them afterwards if you want some extra help with it. So let's go ahead and start with the first thing I always want to start with. Oh, Rizuko, I hate to say it. But, hey, it's good to see you. I hear a lot coming out of your microphone. Do you mind if I mute you? I think I microphone is on. It's on, but see, every time I speak, I can hear myself coming out of your computer. I can hear you. Yes, yes. No, I think that's good now. Good deal. Okay, thank you. All right. But hey, Rizuko, when you're not talking, do you mind muting yourself? Okay, I see. Yeah. All right, because I can hear my voice coming out of your computer. All right, here we have more people coming in the class. Let me give this to Denisha. Where's Kiara? Hang on, friends. All right, and so, you know, as, as most of our classes, we always get started with, I want to ask if anyone has any questions. You know, I love to start the class with questions because I want to help you out as much as possible. So does anybody, hey, good morning. Does anybody have any questions for today? No questions. Well, I think we have a new student though. So, what is your name? New student. You putting your bag down? Yeah. What is your name? My name is Rita. In English, it's Rita. Rita. Oh, well, welcome, Rita. We have a new student in class. So let's well, let's welcome uh, Rita. And I think Rizuko is our new student online. So I do want to welcome her to the classes too. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this class. We did move sort of fast, but I do want to welcome all the new people to classes. So let me get you a worksheet real quick. And so, like I said, we're going to start. No, I just didn't do that. Oh, <laughs> we're going to start our class with another reading exercise. And so, if nobody has any questions about what we're talking about, let's go ahead and go right into it. So this is an example of a reading article that you will see on the IELTS exam. And so I think let's take about 10 minutes to read this, and then we're going to answer some questions. And then I promise this will be the last reading exercise that we do, but I want to just make sure you're prepared for it. So let's take 10 minutes to read this, and then we'll answer some questions about it. Thank <laughs> you. 
And for the people in class, I actually did put the questions on the back. So you can look at the questions while you're reading it too. And just remember, you know, we, we talked about the reading module last week, but just really focus on the subjects here. Really focus on the important words and what you think they're trying to tell you, because that's really going to help you answer the questions afterwards. Um, let's take a couple more minutes and then we'll answer the questions.
All right, let's see. Anna, did you have a question? Anna, I see that your hand is raised. Did you have a question? All right, that's fine. Leave it up. No big deal. I was hoping Floriano would get back, but <laughs> we can we can go ahead and wait. let's let's look at some questions with these and see if we can answer them. So we have the first set. So this is the type of question that you will be asked in this exam. So it says write the correct letters in boxes one and two. Now we don't have boxes, so you can just circle the right answer. The list below gives some of the advantages of employing older workers. So which two advantages are mentioned by the writer of the text? So now I will ask any who, who can answer these? Which two advantages were mentioned in that article? And any, anybody can answer. <laughs> you said D. So, so Anna has said D and G. They can deal with unexpected problems and they are more skilled in personal relationships. So does anybody have anything else, or do we agree with that? Yes, it's uh, D and... Yes. You agree, oh, Gloria? You agree and, yeah, that? D and G, yes. All right, they, why is that? They can deal you... with, uh -huh, is it with, a pro, with the problems and... Also, uh, the skills, yes. The skills, all right, all right. All right, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Venetia, what are you? I see Venetia's nodding ahead, all right. What about you, Lizette? What do you think? So I think it's G is, is two, yes. They are more skilled in personal relationship, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. I think it's B, but I don't understand. What is it? Predict areas. Uh, I can't understand what is it. Oh, so when you predict something, it means you can you can see it coming. Like if something is troublesome, you can so see. I, it I think it's. I think it's because trouble in the future. I think it's. I understand it. But, uh, I mean, the older person can see the trouble in the future. I mean, they is correct. Well, you know, honestly, and when you do trouble in the future, like unexpected problems, is a uh, very similar to that. So I don't ah, want you to ah, think okay, okay. Too. So let's look okay. at that. It is actually it's B and G was this one. So they can predict areas that may cause trouble in the future. But I do want you to know that is sort of similar to saying unexpected problems. But we do need to do what was written in the article. And then G, they are more skilled in personal relationships. So everybody got G, right? So all right. So let's do let's do another question with this one, and then we'll move on to a writing part. So. This is the same way, but one thing I want you to focus on is that this says give some of the disadvantages of employing younger workers. Now, they will do this in the IELTS exam because the first question was advantages. The second question is disadvantages. So you really need to focus on what you're reading on, not only with the text, but these questions as well. So who can who who wants to try some of these? What are two of the disadvantages of employing younger workers? All right. So Vidisha says D and Me, F. Uh, she didn't stay um, long time with the same company. All right. So I've got a C now. All right. I've yeah, got C, yeah. D, and F. All right. Do we do we have any other answers? And, yes. Uh huh. All right, go ahead. And also, the there are no as well educated like the old people. The E. All right. Now, is this something the article said, or is that how you feel, Gloria? <laughs> I think she's right. They are in the article. They oh, are in the article. They said the older yeah. people, his uh, education are, is, are more higher than the younger people. That yeah. is the E. All right, Alba, I see that your hand is up. What do you think? Ask me. Oh, no, Alba, her hand is up. Alba, Alba. 
Ana Lopez has had her hand up for quite some time, but I'm not sure if she can hear us. <laughs> well, hopefully we can figure out the, uh, the the microphone situation. But we can see that the answer to this one is, it is C and E. Yeah. So they do not stay with the same company for very long. And they are not as well educated as older workers. So I, one thing I want to say is that I do have a very big file that has examples of all of the reading exercises on the ELTS exam. Um, I don't have time to go over these every single one in class, but I'll send this file to you just so you'll have more examples and you can practice on your own. But I want to go ahead and talk about the writing module, which is the next module in IELTS that we'll talk about. And the writing module, let's talk about the structure of this first. So you've got 60 minutes to do two tasks. So the first task is test takers are asked to describe a visual information. So a user that have the worksheet, this is an example of something that you would see. And you need to write it in your own words. You have to write 150 words in about 20 minutes. So with this one, you're going to describe a chart, or maybe a, like a bar graph or some sort of statistical information. And you have to make sure you're being very academic with it as well. Now, a lot of the people in these classes, let, let's be honest, their writing is not very academic. So for the writing part of this class, I'm going to go with the basics of writing. And we can, if you do want to take this test, we can work on some academic exercises. But I want to start from the basics. But let's continue to talk about the structure right now. So the first task is describing a diagram. Now, the second task is students will respond to a point of view or argument or problem. So this is one where you need to write 250 words in about 40 minutes. And so this is a situation where I would give you a scenario and you tell me if you disagree or agree and then tell me why. Now, one thing about these writing parts is they do require what we call essays. Now, essays is multiple paragraphs about a topic. So usually with the first one, it would be about three paragraphs. But with the second task, you might do anywhere from five to six paragraphs. But like I said, this is academic writing. And I know not everyone is preparing to take this test anyway. And I want to do something that's going to help this class as much as possible. So, oh, I forgot. Let, let, let's, look at, let's look at examples real quick. And then I promise we'll start. So this is an example of something you may see on the first task. So this is actually straight from the IELTS exam. So it says, the chart to the left shows the number of men and women in further education in Britain in three periods and whether they were studying full-time or part-time. So summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Now that, that might sound pretty intense. So an example of what I would do here is I would, I would look at this chart, right? And I would say, it looks like the left side is males and the right side is females. And one thing that I notice is that full-time education seems to have gone up among males and females from 1970 to 1990. You know, if you look at the full chart, the bottom is showing the years and then the left side is showing men and women in thousands. So, 200,000, 400,000, 600,000. And so a trend that I notice is that full-time education has gone up, but part-time education is different. So in males in the 70s, part-time education was high. It lowered in the 80s and it rose again in the 90s. Whereas with females, part-time education rose each every 10 years. So that, that could be an observation that you notice about this. And that's just an example of task number one. So let's look at an example of task number two. So task number two, and this is straight from the exam as well. It says, children who are brought up in families that do not have large amounts of money are better prepared to deal with the problems of adult life than children brought up by wealthy parents. And you say, to what extent do you agree or disagree with this opinion? And so this would be a situation where we would write an essay and it would probably be anywhere from five to six paragraphs. 
And so if you're not intimidated, now let's go back to the basics. So a paragraph. A paragraph is usually five sentences. It's a topic sentence. It's three support sentences and then a conclusion. And then, like I said, an essay is multiple paragraphs. Usually in an essay, you have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. So a paragraph is five sentences. An essay is like five paragraphs. You can think about that. But I want to go ahead and start. Well, and this is a this is a structure. Now, I wanted to give you this so you can really see what this looks like. So on the right side, we have a paragraph. So this is your topic sentence, your three support sentences, and your um, concluding sentence. And then this is what a an essay looks like. See, one, two, three, four, five paragraphs. So one paragraph and five paragraphs for an essay. But I want to, I wanted, to, this is a very good a writing teacher. And I wanted you to watch her talk about how to write a paragraph. And then I'll show you some examples too. Like I said, the paragraph is one of the most basic things we're going to talk about. And you need to know a bit more for the IELTS, but for this class, let's just focus on paragraphs right now, and then we can talk more as we continue. So let's watch this, this description here. All right, so you wanna learn about the structure of a paragraph, and I'm gonna explain that in this short video, um, but just so you know, this is not the only way to write a paragraph, it's just the one that most instructors are looking for if you're writing in um, an academic setting in the United States. It's super uh, boring maybe and straightforward and not very creative, but you can learn to be creative within it. And if you don't like writing because you don't know how to organize your ideas, this is gonna help you to get started and give you confidence, okay? So for the structure and organization of a paragraph, you just need to think of three things, okay? So you need to have the intro, you need to have the body, and the conclusion, okay? Just like that, all right? So we have intro, body, conclusion. What are those things? Okay, so the intro is um, what, you're, what you're talking about. You're introducing the topic, but you're also introducing your point of view or your opinion about the topic. So inside the intro, the way we do that is through a topic sentence, okay? And the topic sentence has two things, like I just said. It has the topic of the paper or the paragraph, and it has the your opinion, the writer's opinion about the topic, okay? So let's say, for example, you're going to write about what success means to you. you the topic is success. Your, your professor wants you to write about what you think success is, what defines success. So the topic is success. And then your opinion about what defines it is, your, is the second part. It's your opinion. So you might say, um, being rich is the definition of success, right? Topic, opinion. Or you might say, um, being happy is the definition of success. That again, topic, success, opinion, being happy, being rich, whatever you think success is, okay? So that's the beginning. Now, everything you've said here now has to be developed because people are gonna say, what do you mean? I don't agree with you, what? why are you saying that? And if you can't explain why, then your, your, your point isn't going to be made, right? So it, it helps to develop the idea that you've made. And in the body is where you're gonna do that, okay? So I like to tell my students that inside the body, we wanna make three points. It doesn't have to be three, but I think three is a good magical number. So you're gonna use three points to do what? Every single one of those points has to support that topic sentence. If they don't, it's off topic or it's not unified, okay? So you might say um, the definition of success is being wealthy. That's your topic sentence. And you're gonna give reasons maybe, okay? So your first reason might be because being wealthy allows you to be entertained, go to the movies, you know, have fun, travel, right? So 
Your first point might be it allows you to have fun, okay? Now, if you say that, I'm going to go, what do you mean it allows you to have fun? What are you talking about? And that's where you're going to be specific. After you give that point, you're going to also be specific by giving some sort of fact, some sort of reason, or an example, or a detail, or a quote that you analyze. Okay, so a simple way to do this is to just say, um, you know, oh, by going to being able to pay the expensive uh, tickets at the movies or being able to f travel first class um, on a trip on an airplane. Um, why else do you think being wealthy uh, means that you are successful? You might say because you can avoid uh, desperate situations. And I'm going to say, what do you mean by that? And then that's when you give another fact or another example or another reason or another detail or another quote that you analyze. Okay. You might say, oh, I, I'll, if I'm rich, I'll always be able to buy food and have a house to live in. I'll never be able to feed, experience food insecurity or housing insecurity. That would be a good example. And then one more reason. Give me one more reason why you think that being wealthy is a definition of success. And you can say, um, you can say because you can have uh, better health when you're wealthy. And I'm going to say, what? How can you be healthy uh, because you're rich? Because I know there's probably a lot of rich people that are not healthy because they're rich, right? But you're going to say, no, no, no. It, it, it's because when you have money, you can pay for expensive organic food. And if you don't have enough money, uh, obviously, processed food and fast food is cheaper than that. Okay, so that would be another fact, reason, example, detail, or quote that you analyze. Okay, so again, in the body, you're supporting your topic sentence and you're giving two to three points. One, two, three. Each point relates back to the topic sentence and supports the topic sentence. But each point also needs to have some sort of specific detail. Otherwise, your reader's just not going to remember it. So don't forget, after each point, use some sort of fact, reason, example, detail, or analysis. If you can just remember Freda, Frida, F-R-E-D-A, you'll remember that you need to add something in here to keep going and keep your ideas specific. That's one thing I always see with my students is, as they say, how can I write more? How can I think of more ideas? I'll say, okay, think of a fact, think of a reason, think of an example or a detail or, or uh, analyze this quote. And then they have more to say. Or I'll see, oh, this is not specific. You're saying this, but I don't know what you mean because you're not specific. And then they add a detail or an example and then I understand what they're saying, okay? At the end, you have your conclusion. The conclusion is so much like the topic sentence. It's just restating your topic sentence, okay? So I'm just gonna write that restatement of the topic sentence. That's what it is, okay? So, of course, I'm not saying repeat your topic sentence. I'm saying restate your topic sentence. So that just means use the same idea in the conclusion as in the topic sentence, but use different words to do that, okay? So that's it. You can see here that this outline of a paragraph actually looks a lot like and I always tell my students this, it looks like a delicious hamburger or Oreo or something like that. You know, just something to remember that there are these three parts. And if you can remember those three parts and remember that in a hamburger or in a cookie, an Oreo cookie, you have the top and the bottom are the same thing, right? And uh, now after that, I want everyone to take a deep breath <laughs> because it's like I said, I know writing is, is very quick, and, but I think she does give it a good explanation. It's just when you're writing a paragraph, you have your first topic sentence. That's whatever you're saying. You're saying 
the sky is blue. And then the next sentence you could say, it's blue because of the atmosphere. And you could say, when there's clouds in the sky, sometimes it's less blue. You know, you're just, you're just making a topic, you're supporting that topic, and at the end, you're saying, and those are some reasons why the sky is blue. You know, and so this this is an example from the IELTS. So this is a sort of intense paragraph, but I did want you to see how it comes together. And then we're going to work on an example of our own too. And so this is a topic sentence that says, one of the main reasons that people live longer is that there has been considerable process, progress in the field of medical care. So that is your, to the, your, your topic sentence, right? You, they're basically saying people live longer because healthcare is better, is what they're saying. And so let's support that sentence. The next one, you could say, not only have knowledge and facilities improved, but medical services are also available to more people than ever before. So that is one thing that supports that topic sentence. And let's support it again. Many countries, for example, have national health systems which provide free treatment for the whole population. So giving an example is a good way to support your topic sentence. And then the next one, in addition to this, people have become more aware of the importance of staying healthy. So you see that's another sentence that supports that topic. And then the last one, it says, as a result, they take greater care of themselves avoiding many fatal illnesses and diseases. And I want you to look at those phrases that we have underlined and bolded because the thing about a paragraph is you do want to use phrases that tie everything together. So the first one, one of the main reasons, and then you have not only because you're leading into these sentences, but medical services are also available. There's your for example, where you give the example, you're saying in addition to this, in addition to the support statement, and then at the end you say as a result. So you can use these phrases to tie your sentences together. And we can talk about a bit more of those as we continue. So now that you've sort of, you see the diagram, you see what it looks like. So I want everyone to just sort of think about where they are right now. And I want you to write me a paragraph based off this little statement. So the statement is Alabama has very hot, it should say summers. Alabama has very hot summers. Some people think you need to carry a water bottle with you all the time. So do you agree or disagree? So before we start writing this, let's talk about this out loud. So if I were to ask you what your topic sentence would be here, what, what, what was something you could give me? Anybody can answer it. Do what? I need a whole sentence of it. Like if, you, if this was your question and you were writing a paragraph, what would your first sentence be? I think that uh, you need to carry a water bottle, but the thing is in Alabama, is there are no places to refill bottles in there. Uh, so, so Anna says that you need to carry a water bottle but sometimes there's no places to fill it. So does that mean you support this or you don't support this? I support you do support this, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. So so you could say, to say is that I think you should carry a water bottle in Alabama. However, mm -hmm. sometimes it can be difficult to find a place to fill them. So that is a good point. But when you're writing a paragraph, you need to say things that support your statement. Mm -hmm. Because if you tell people it's difficult to fill that up, then they're not really going to want to have a water bottle. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is, I do think it's important to have a water bottle in Alabama because water is the key to good health. Mm -hmm. And you could say, it's very important to stay hydrated because it makes the body flow better. Okay. It's important to get eight glasses of water every day, or at least try to get that. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, you know, just kind of word it that way. So that would be, you know, that would be a good way you could do this. What is another topic sentence somebody could come up with. 
And the online people can give me one too. Well, you could say in Alabama, the summers are dreadfully hot. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why carrying a water bottle is important. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, maybe you don't think carrying a water bottle is a good idea. And you could write about that too. You could say, personally, I don't think carrying a water bottle is a good idea because we need to save the oceans or something. You know, some people, some people don't like to carry water bottles because they say it's wasteful. And so that is sort of your prompt. I, I do now, I want everyone to write now. I want everyone to write me a paragraph. If you agree with this or disagree with it, I want you to write me a paragraph right now and then we can talk about them when you finish. So let's take let's take about 10 minutes to write a paragraph and then we can talk about them. And I didn't uh, so you got something to write on, you've got something to write on. What you can do is just write it on this part of the worksheet and I'll give you another worksheet. Okay. And the online people, yeah, you, you can either write it or type it out.
All right, so I, th I think some people are finishing up. So let, let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that we wrote. And now it's a case of I wonder if some people could have a bit of bravery and read what they, or read what they wrote. Does anybody? Can, can anyone read with the paragraph that they wrote for me? Now, Ina, we, we, you, you come to the front and do it so that the people online can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Ina's going to come to the front and read her paragraph. And she's going to say it very loud, too, so people can uh, hear her. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <clears throat> Pairing with a bottle of water during the hot summers, it's important to preserve your health and try to reduce the trash, reducing it during the day. In hot summers, you lose water and minerals, and those only can be replaced if you are correctly hydrated. During hot summers in Alabama, the could be like more than 100 Fahrenheit, and you can be dehydrated in a few hours. So for this reason, it's important that you carry a bottle of water and drink it during the day. Very good. Very good. Let's give a round of applause on that one. It's very good. And so you see, she got the basic structure of this. She said, she said at the beginning it was important to have a water bottle. And then she gave reasons and examples of why. And that's it. That's all you, all you really got to do. Now, that, so I thought, and I thought that was perfect. So I want to thank you for that again. What about online? Will somebody online read me what they wrote? Oh, that's left me again. Well, maybe some of them are still writing. Does anyone in person? No, that's all right. How are you feeling, Rita? No, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Before I start writing it, we can give everyone maybe a couple more minutes to write this. I, I figured Lyazette was finished. She looked like she was finished there. <laughs> maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> I finished it, but it, it's not good. <laughs> Let's say if you, if you don't want to read it, you don't have to. Thank you. Hmm? All right, Gloria, can you read yours for us? Oh, Gloria, maybe you have a question. Oh, Gloria, maybe you'd just like to raise your hand. <laughs> maybe you could read yours. Oh, Ritsuko, do you, do you feel comfortable reading yours out loud? Yes, sir. Uh... Carrying a water bottle with you on a hot day is very important because if you don't take water or any other drink, there is a possibility to get heat stroke. 
Also, if you carry a bottle of water with you, then you can take hydration at any time, even if no place to buy water or drinks. Oh, yeah, so that's good. So, so, yeah, she talked about the dangers of a heat stroke, and she talked about, you know, going places where you might not have options for water. So it sounds like Rasuka supports bringing a water bottle. So very good, very good. And like I said, everyone said, so th this is something I really just want to focus on this structure. You know, for, for as far as grammar and any of that, I'm not really worried about that right now. I'm just worried about understanding how to make a sentence and how to support that sentence. So we've got we've got some good ones so far from Rasuka and Anna. Is any maybe I'll give everyone one more chance. Does anybody else want to go? Oh, go ahead, Floriana. When stay neither the driving, you have bad symptoms, for example, dark vision, cold sanctions, and and some sometimes a fever. The only the only way you will stay in good health is when you are in soft clothes and wear soft clothes. Yeah, it is very good for you. Yeah, so we're talking about some examples of clothing you can wear and some other ways you can alleviate the heat. But it did go back to supporting, you know, drinking water and staying cool. And so I thought that was good too. So I I think everybody's sort of understanding the structure. Do you have a question, Anna? Yes, when you are writing in the exam, they said how many words are you typing? I believe yeah, it will give you a word count. Just so, if she asks, do you know how many words you're typing? So if you take the computer exam, it does give you a word count. So you know how many words you're writing at the time. Yeah, I know that's something you can kind of get worried about. So um, so one thing I do want to say is, I'm, you know, and I've, I've said it throughout the class, but I'll say it again. So I know this is an IELTS prep class, but next, so if you look on your syllabus, next week we're talking completely about the writing module. And I've, I've taught writing classes for English before. So next week we are going to have a writing class, but we're going to have a foundational writing class, a basic writing class, because I, like I said, I think that will benefit everybody here a lot more. So instead of the academic writing that you do in the IELTS, we're going to have a basic writing class next week. And I can't say I'm going to get you up to speed for the IELTS in one class, but I think it will help you a lot more because it seems like a lot of people in this class are on very different levels when it comes to writing. So I really want to make sure everybody is on the same page. And it is going to be a lot more interactive. It's not just going to be uh, 10 minutes of writing in silence. So I'm going to create a very interactive writing class for next week. And it, like I said, if you do want to take the IELTS, Sure, we can work together one on one and I can help you prepare for the academic writing side. But for right now, we're just going to do a regular writing class next week. And I'm looking forward to teaching you that because I've designed writing classes before and I do think it'll be a lot of fun. So you know, we, we don't have so many classes left, you know. So the next week we're working strictly on writing. And then the next week is a bit of writing and speaking. And then the last week, we're working on the speaking module. So this is week five. We only have three weeks left. So it is going by very quickly. So I will ask, uh, before we leave today, does anybody have any questions about the class or the program or anything else we have going on? Just one of questions about the Toastmaster today is yeah. offline or online? Oh, so Liza, we don't have a Toastmasters meeting today. So the oh. test classes, it's always the second, third, and fourth Tuesday of the month. So today is the first Tuesday of the month. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So she's asking, so Toastmasters is the public speaking club. And notice, if you do want to improve your writing, writing a speech is one of the best ways to do that. So I encourage all of you to join uh, my Toastmasters club and my public speaking class because it's another way to improve your writing and speaking. And I just started the uh, toast, the, I call it the pathways class today. But if you do want to join that public speaking class, please let me know. Um, that class is very good for building speeches, for beginning speakers. If you've never done it before, I will help you write a speech every week or every two weeks. 
on your timeline and I'll work with you one on one with that class instead of in a group setting. So I do encourage everyone to join that class as well. Um, Elma, did you have a question? I have want to say something. This week it is the barbecue week. <laughs> it is indeed barbecue week for the 4th of July. A lot of people do like to have a lot of barbecue. And perhaps Piconia, yeah. if you're Elma, maybe Rita likes that. Yeah. Well. Do you like Piconia? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 so we, we have a Brazilian in class today. Yes, yes, but Don is very good, very good. Yes, yeah, so it is the 4th of July holiday week, so we won't have any classes on Thursday, but I will still share resources for everyone to look. All right, go ahead, Rita. Drink water, but not too much cold. Not too, too much cold? Yeah. Oh, cold water if it's bad for your heart. All right. So, so Rita says drink plenty of water, but not cold water because it's bad for you. <laughs> All right. It's a very bold statement, Rita. All right. Well, if nobody, if nobody else has any questions, I will go ahead and so I'll go ahead and end the recording for everybody. I do appreciate you coming today, and you know, if you do have any questions for me during the week, you're always welcome to let me know. And so, thank you. I, have a good week.